Hi, I'm Stephanie Hutchins, life coach and owner of Serotonous Life. Now, I'm often asked why I chose the name I did for my business, especially considering that it includes a name that most people have never heard of and have no idea how to pronounce. Um, but what you must understand is that I was a college um, professor for 11 years and taught a variety of biology courses. And I could not help but tie in my love of science um, with my coaching um, practice. Now, serotonous cones um, only release their seeds when exposed to an environmental trigger, like fire or death of the parent plant. And I really feel a connection to this word serotony because I feel it's analogous to our lives in many ways. You know, people often only look at how destructive fires can be. They only look at what died as a result, you know, the devastation that was left behind. Well, most people don't realize that fires are really important in natural environments. They allow for new growth and new opportunities. And I specifically like to compare us and our traumas to the endangered giant sequoias in California, which actually have serotonous cones. Now, I'm not sure if you've seen these before, but I'd like to take this opportunity to show you a picture of what these giant sequoias look like. Now, I can only get, you know, the base of it in here, but you can tell this is a car here, and this is the base of some giant sequoias. You can see a person here. These are massive trees. They actually happen to be the largest trees on earth. And humans almost protected these trees, again, the largest trees on earth, into, an ex into extinction. In an effort to protect these beautiful giants, conservationists um, prevented naturally occurring forest fires from moving through national parks like Yosemite in order to preserve these iconic trees. But what we didn't previously know was that, um, that the trees um, required fire in order to open their cones and release their seeds. So without fires, their seeds were never released and new sequoias weren't allowed to germinate and replace the older generations that eventually started to die off. Now, the mission of my business is to help others realize that the fires of their past did not destroy them. Those fires just caused their seeds to crack, allowing for massive growth to follow. And actually, my own life is proof of this. You know, my, my life has been extremely hard at times. I've been sexually violated by eight men, seven of which occurred be, um, by the age of 15. Um, I was at, that doesn't even include the time that was attacked from behind um, at knife point um, because I was successfully able to get the knife away from the perpetrator and run away to safety. You know, and although these things were obviously difficult um, for me, to handle and about broke my spirit, what ultimately caused me to fly into a tailspin was when at 25, I found the love of my life dead. At that point, my promiscuity spiraled out of control. My weight topped out at 222 pounds. I had high cholesterol before the age of 30 and I contemplated suicide on an almost daily basis. But as hard as my life has been, it's also been beautiful. I've explored multiple countries across five different continents. I'm climbing tall mountains, experiencing beauty I never imagined, having grand adventures, and just meeting pe pe the people. <laughs> the people, you know, warm my heart and soul, you know. And actually, a few more pictures I want to show you about some of my favorite adventures. Let me share my screen one more time with you. Um, so the sequoias again. Now, this is me um, when I first started learning about ice climbing. And let me tell you, I love ice tools. I feel so empowered <laughs> whenever I'm utilizing them. Um, this is me um, with my first experience um, in paragliding, and this thing that I have on is my flight suit, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, if you've never experienced paragliding, you have to. It is simply magical. 
I spent 45 minutes in the air flying like a bird. You know, we went up high and down low. We went over a little town and we're actually able to land in the same place that we started in. So cool. Now this, hard to see, um, but this is me obviously at nighttime and it's snowing out on the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. It's the highest point in Tanzania and also the highest point in Africa. Now this is a very commonly climbed mountain, um, but I'm very proud to say that on this day that this picture was taken, I was the first person to summit from all directions um, that day and it was uh, January 2nd, 2018. And that was a very important win for me because you know, I started climbing, hiking and climbing mountains when I was 222 pounds. And let me tell you, when you're morbidly obese, you know, every little hill you're climbing feels as big as Mount Kilimanjaro. So to be able to ultimately summit that mountain was, was a very important accomplishment to me. And then one more picture. This is me, one of my favorite pictures at the base camp of Mount Elbrus, um, the highest point in Russia, and also the highest point in um, Europe. And um, well, I should say the highest point in, uh, in uh, Western Europe and Western um, Russia. And um, as you know, Russia is a massive country, you know, so um, so it's in the Caucasus Mountains. And um, this is right before, um, I think the day before, if I'm remembering, remembering correctly, before we did our summit bid and successfully summited the mountain. So enough pictures <laughs> for now. <laughs> um, so in addition to traveling the world and having all these great adventures, um, I've completed my PhD and I've taught on the college level again for 11 years, but the most beautiful thing of all is that I'm now using what I have learned to overcome my trauma to help others overcome theirs. Now, for many years, my traumas held me back, but now I live a spectacular life. I have done most of my traveling and completing many, have completed many of my climbs without knowing anyone in the location I'm um, traveling to. You know, whenever I'm getting ready to embark on another journey, I'm, in very, I'm always asked without fail, um, questions like, aren't you afraid that you're going to become disabled or even die on one of these climbs? Aren't you afraid that you're going to get hurt um, traveling to all these countries on your own in all these places by yourself? And I always have to say, of course I'm scared. Of course I worry that something terrible is going to happen to me. But if I keep trying to protect myself from harm like we protected the sequoias, then I could be missing out on the chance to create new opportunities, new skills, and new ways new ways to bring value to the universe and people around me. You know, and it's, it's not that I welcome more traumas in my life, but I know that even though the fires of my past left devastation behind, they also allowed my seeds to open. Without my traumas, some of my skills, ideas, and opportunities might never have been allowed to germinate, and they would have ended up dying with me someday. You know, I'm not special. If I was able to flourish after my traumas, you can too. Um, all I did was have a shift in my mindset. You know, I sat back and said, Tam, if I can experience all that I did and overcome them, all of those things, like I must be powerful and I must be strong and I can overcome anything. And I have used that mindset to get through many difficult times in my life. You know, whether it's climbing big mountains or the fact that I spent, you know, 12 years completing college. Um, I use that mindset the whole time to get through that. And I also use that mindset to grow my business while still working full time and teaching teaching part-time. You know, and the purpose of me sharing my story with you is to give you hope that no matter how empty, sad, or broken you may feel, that your suffering can and will end. 
you know, my life again has been both extremely painful, but extremely beautiful. And I know that the beauty I have experienced has grown out of my darkest experiences. And it is an honor and a privilege to be able to help others learn to also find beauty in darkness like I have. Thanks for listening.